Folks, soccer has had such a rich history in St. Louis, and tonight we honor a legend. Let's take a look at a video from the movie Miracle Match, the 1950 U.S. World Cup team that ups upsetting. Gary, my friend, you look like you're about to have a heart attack. Gary Keel, very smart, crafty, always seem to be in the right place at the right time. It was simply the greatest ever put forward by any team in any sport. The Mr. June 29, 1950, in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, when the United States defeated England 1-0. Now, let me say that again. A group of part-timers in the United States defeated England, the inventors of the sport, and created one of the greatest upsets in the history of organized sports. St. Louis has long been proud, Tom mentioned this, of its own soccer history, and its pedigree in large part was carved out by the five men who started for the United States team that day, five St. Louisans, 60 years ago. Charlie Colombo, Gino Periani, Frank Borghi, Frank B.B. Wallace, and tonight's honoree, Harry Keel. 1966, my senior year at Bright High School, Bob Gelber called to offer me a soccer scholarship at St. Louis University. I couldn't say yes fast enough. Since 1959, I had watched all my idols for St. Louis University, played at Fairgrounds Park in North City, the first impression when I saw that was indeed lasting. I didn't want to go anywhere else. Bob Gelber then quickly announced that he was leaving St. Louis University to start up the soccer program at SIU Evansville. Bob Gelber can't leave St. Louis University. Who's going to coach? Then the next announcement, and we immediately realized that the proverbial bar had really been lifted. Harry Keel become a soccer coach at St. Louis University. Val Pelizero, his assistant, I mentioned earlier about watching idols at Fairgrounds Park play for St. Louis University. Trigg, Duker, Cerisi, McBride, and Tilly. Anyone who's ever touched a soccer ball in St. Louis knows the coolest name, but especially the players, Louie, Rooney, Cook, Vasquez, Wecky, Epi, Mendoza, Pelizero, and of course, Harry Keel. Any degree of popularity, recognizability, a newfound cachet that the sport of soccer enjoys today in our country, is directly attributable to what the city of St. Louis started well over a century ago. And the two teams that did the most to cement that national legacy are Kudis and St. Louis University. It is no accident that the name Harry Keel is an immense part of both programs' rich histories. For Kudis, as with the United States team, he was always the calm, composed, central defender, found people out of the backfield, read the game easily, quickly, and epitomized the prowess of a true national power. He brought that same attitude of representing yourself and your city through your soccer, and in the process, won five NCAA championships at St. Louis University. Part of the greatest generation 
began with the United States Postal Service in June of 1948. He was 20, just home from the Navy, still single. He carried the mail on foot for 18 years until he made supervisor in 1966. Then his duties moved inside. His morning then began earlier, 5 a.m. to be exact, but his days were over by one o'clock. Fortunately for us, St. Louis University, that meant he could have a second job. He and his wife, Alma, have three children, Colleen, Peggy, and Ty. Ty, by the way, continued the key on name of representing his country for the United States national team and was later an excellent soccer broadcaster. Harry has won every award imaginable and is in every Hall of Fame possible, including, of course, the United States National Soccer Hall of Fame. In short, he is soccer royalty in our country. As Jeffrey Douglas said in his book, The Game of Their Lives, about the 1950 win over England, the world needs more Harry Keogh's. Untroubled, life embracing, the son of a fine man, and a mother just made things work. Those sort of things carry over. They stick with you. You remember them. And the cycle, like most every other cycle, just carries on. And in this case, to an iconic, legendary status. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Legends Award winner, justifiably, Harry Keogh. mentioned uh, by Mil Bill McDermott was the greatest generation. Now, this is the Jack Buck Sports Awards. And Jack Buck was a part of the greatest generation. And today is December 7th. As FDR said, a day that will live in infamy. Uh, Jack Buck fought in World War II. And a good pal of yours, Frank Borgie, patched him up at the bridge at Remagen. That's what I understand. And tell us about your great friend Frank Borgi, who was the star of the movie. Well, Frank <laughs> was a fellow that everybody liked. And how could anybody... And Frank, of course, is in our audience. Maybe I should make him stand up. Great upset that they make the movie, made the movie. Right? Well, it had to be Frank Borgie, the goalie, because he made save after save after save. And of course, and half of the time after he made the save, he threw that ball about three quarters of the way in the, in the <laughs> field. And, uh, you know, he just was a, an excellent player. And uh, of course, Pee Wee Wallace used to have a lot of fun with Frank Borgie. He, he always kidded Frank, and Frank enjoyed every minute of it, you know. But, uh, well, you and Frank are, are still. Great friends. I, I know you talk to him every, every, every couple of weeks. Uh, another connection to Jack Buck. Uh, I mean, everybody loved Jack Buck, and including uh, a great relationship between Jack Buck and your dad, my grandfather, Patty Keel. Right. Well, that was. But anyway, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to be here tonight, and uh, uh, let, let's see our soccer program continue. And go ahead, thank you. <laughs> 